Hi guys, I know it's crazy. We've reached the midway point of the year already. What is going on? Why is it going so quickly? I have no idea, but yet here we are. It's basically July and I'm deciding just like I did last year to do a quick recap and review of what I consider to be the best 10 records of the year so far. Now this isn't across any specific genre. You know, I could have just limited myself to here's the top 10 prog rock runs of the year, or here's the top 10 prog metal ones, or doom metal, or black metal, or just anything. It doesn't matter. No, rather than just sort of like pigeonholing myself into one particular genre and having to decide what counts as what, I've decided, screw that, I'm just going to do one for the entire range of everything that I've been enjoying so far this year. I was tempted to do the top 20, but, uh, you know, wasn't really feeling it. And I figured 10's a bit more of a digestible number to look at, so... Don't worry if your band is not on this list, because chances are you might be in the top 20. So at the end of the year, I will be doing like maybe a top 10 and a 10 honourable mention. So kind of like a top 20, but split in two. But until such a time as that happens, let's concentrate on the here and now. And let's take a look at what I consider to be the 10 best albums of 2024 so far. Yeah. Okay, at number 10, let's get things started. It is... Ilion by Slift. Huge fan of this record, absolutely love it. Wasn't sure what to make of it when I first picked it up. You know, I was getting a lot of like buzz about this album and I heard really, really good things. So, ooh. yeah, it's a very pretty vinyl. Uh, <laughs> if you've not listened to this one before, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like space rocky. It's quite angular, I suppose is the way I want to look at it. You know, my favourite descriptive word of all time. It's angular. That's angular. Everything's angular, apparently. So, you know, rumour has that I might have been looking at commonly used words in my Google Docs. But I love this one. I love this one, even with its crazy, weird, spaghetti, gas mask people on the front. In fact, if anything, I'd say they're part of the charm. If you're not listening to this one, 100% check it out. Really do enjoy it. Be warned, it's very long. It's very... What's the best way of putting it? Uh, inaccessible, I suppose, is the best way of putting it. You've really got to give it a time to really, you know, appreciate and value, as it were, which is why this one has taken its time with me. I loved it when I first listened to it, admittedly, because I'm kind of, you know, wired for this kind of music. But if you're not, maybe check it out, see if you like it. I love it enough to have it on my top ten, so, yeah. Okay, number nine possibly the most recent entry on this list and the one which has made me think do I really want to be including this already but then I figured screw it, it's my list I can change my mind at the end of the year it's fine it's the new Alceste album Les Chants de Loire now yeah I have just done a review of this one absolutely love it so if you want my full detailed thoughts on it you can go check that out there this one comes on a particularly lovely looking transparent yellow vinyl Big fan of Alcest, have been for a very long time now, since like 2012 I've been listening to these guys, so yeah, this really does feel like it's a great continuation of their sound, kind of picking up the torch where we left off with Spiritual Instinct, but a little lighter, a little softer, more gentle, more accessible if you will, so if you're not sure about the whole black gaze movement or anything like that, you know, you think it's maybe too harsh, too screamy, too angry, too... Uh, I think you'll get a blast out of this one because this is a very gentle album in terms of like, you know, what you can expect from that particular genre. Great, great record. Not sure it will survive the top 10 by the end of the year because I am still in the honeymoon period with this album, which is kind of why it's featuring on here at the moment. The curse of being a YouTube reviewer is you kind of end up being a bit reactionary to everything. Kind of the nature of the job, unfortunately. But... I can change my mind by the end of the year. This is just the midpoint, you know? So at number nine, there you have it. Alceste with Les Chants de Loire. At number eight, we've got the fabulous, the wonderful, the impeccable Die Happy by Amscray. Yeah, love this. Love this record. Love this band. Love everything about this. God, it's so good. It is really ticking those progressive indie slash emo rock boxes of mine. It comes in this beautiful little purple vinyl as well, which looks very, very nice indeed. The band were absolute darlings. They actually, they sent this out to me for like, oh, I was like, oh my god, I don't deserve that. You don't need, don't send me things. I'm, I'm not, I'm just, I'm just me, you know. <laughs> They're like, no, please take it. I'm like, okay, I'll take it. But yeah, honestly, legit, this is such a fun album. It's so enjoyable. There's no other real way to put it. This is just a thoroughly enjoyable record. It's so easy to listen to. It's so engaging from start to finish. Every track is a bop. It contains what could possibly be my favourite song of the year so far on it, Within the Garden. 
God, I love that song. Oh, I just want to listen to it over and over and over and over again. And I, sometimes I do. <laughs> you know, I'd like, oh, look, let's spin it five times in a row because I can't get enough of it, you know. But that's just indicative of how much I love this album. It is so much fun. It is such a ride from start to finish. Very small band. Not many listeners on Spotify or anything like that. Please, goodness sake, check them out. Throw them some love. Give them some attention. Tell them how much you like their music because, God almighty, they've made such an impression on me. Okay, time for number seven. It is Dune and Void Kind. Big lover of Dune, or DVNE, or whatever you want to call them. You know, it's definitely Dune, don't worry. They're doing that whole sort of like replacing use of these things that's so very, very metal these days. But this is another fabulous offering from Dune. Loved Etzman Anchor when that came out. And look how pretty that is. Oh, yes. Loved Etzman Anchor. Great, great record. I don't think this quite hits the same. You know, the same brain chemicals as that one did. But that's a tall order, because frankly, Etzman Anchor, I think, is one of the best heavy metal records in general of the 2020s. It's outstanding. So anything which was going to follow that up was always going to have a hard time, you know, hitting the same notes, as it were. But I think Voidkind still did an amazing job of that. I think it still is a worthy successor to Etzman Anchor in terms of, you know, how much I've been enjoying it. It was a much harder album to get into, don't get me wrong. It took a lot longer for me to really fully appreciate this one, but I do keep coming back to this. I do keep exploring and enjoying the nuances and the subtleties of the music, and it's such a jam. It really is just one of those albums that just keeps giving. You know, the more you give into it, the more it will give back to you, and all that jazz, you know? So, this one might even climb higher. I don't know yet, but at the moment, I feel pretty comfortable where it is in the ranking list, but... Hey, who knows? By the time, you know, December 31st rolls around, it might be at number 21. I don't know. Maybe it'll be at number one. We'll see. I don't know. But for the moment, Dunes Void Kind. Great record. Definitely check it out. Right, coming at number six. Basically the polar opposite to what we've just looked at. It is The Lemon Twigs with A Dream Is All We Know. Oh my god. Oh, I love this album. This is my album of the summer. I have found myself constantly... Ooh, look at that. Very pretty. Constantly listening to this one. I can't stop. I just don't want to stop either. It's incredible. It's just the most amount of fun you can have with a single LP that I've heard this year. I think more than any other album on this list, this is probably the most easy to enjoy, you know, even more so than Amscray. And Amscray is incredibly easy to enjoy. This is the sort of music you can put on basically anywhere. Anyone can enjoy this, your mum will enjoy this, your dad, your grandparents, your sisters, your aunts, your uncles, your cousins, maybe even your dog will enjoy this, I don't know. It feels like this is the sort of music which is impossible to genuinely dislike, you know? It feels like, who hurts you if you don't like this album, you know? It's like, <laughs> I mean, okay, maybe it's not entirely your speed, maybe you do prefer the side of music, I mean, God knows I do, but I've still made time for the Lemon Twigs. And I think if you let this into your heart, maybe you too will see the beauty that lies within. All I'm saying is just listen to my golden years and try not to smile, I dare you. It's combo breaker time because it's the first one of the lot that's not on vinyl. It's the CD, it's Azure with Fim. We'll get that a little bit closer so you can have a little look at it. Ooh, look at that. Gorgeous, gorgeous, love this. Okay, this is a perfect example of why I still love physical media. You've got a great big gatefold there, and on the inside you've got the liner notes and everything, and it just tells you everything you need to know about the band, because it's got like this whole like homebrew D&D &D world thing going on, which I absolutely love. I think that's so, so much fun. Like, I am convinced maybe Chris Sampson was writing a uh, homebrew campaign for D&D &D and decided, screw it, I'm going to turn it into an album, because gets me that vibe. But I love that vibe. I love this album. I was honestly slightly surprised myself I haven't ranked this one higher, I'm going to be brutally honest with you. Um, and I was sort of ooing and ahhing and umming and humming about it for quite a while as the sort of positioning of everything in this list. And this is the position that, like I say, it surprised me. It surprised me I have it this low. You <laughs> know, it's in the top five. Haha, <laughs> it's low. Shut up. No, it isn't. But no, <laughs> because for a little while I did have this at my top spot. This really, really was at my number one spot for a bit, but the more I thought about it, the more I thought, yeah, but I just like the others a little tiny bit more. Because there's not much to choose between the top five, I'll be brutally honest with you. But this is a banger. This is such a fun album. It's very coheed, it's very Thank You Scientist, it's very The Deer Hunter. 
Very, very technical. It's a lot. Like, don't get me wrong, it's a lot of a lot. You know, there's a double disca, you know, a double CD disca, so there's a lot of music going on here. It's like nearly 80 minutes, I think it is. So you might have been able to just about squeeze it onto the one disc, but eh. I'll take the two discs, it's fun. It makes for a nice little presentation packet. You know, it just looks gorgeous. Absolutely love this record. I've honestly, again, found this one very, very hard to stop listening to. It's one of those albums I just keep coming back to. I keep listening to it over and over again. Certain parts of it are really, really stuck with me. Like, I will be humming it absentmindedly in the shower forever and ever and ever. I think that anybody who values kind of like modern progressive rock over metal will get a lot out of this album. And I really don't think anybody can afford to pass this one by if that's your kind of jam. So if you've not listened to Thim by Azure just yet, then do yourself a favour. Go check it out and enjoy the exploits of a winged lavender fox. Right, this is one of the uh, two records, I think, on the list that I haven't actually done a full review of yet. The first, of course, was The Lemon Twigs with uh, A Dream Is All We Know. And this one is, and I'm going to pronounce it incorrectly, I'm so sorry, but let's, let's go with my gut and hopefully I'll get it at least semi-right. At number four, we've got Traverse the Berlach by Scale. No, I think that's right, I don't know. Um, yeah, oh my god, this is so good. This is so, so good. I have not been able to stop coming back to this one. This is the Dark Horse, I'm calling it now. This album is my Dark Horse of the year. This is the one that keeps worming its way up the list, you know? I had this one down at, like, I think it was number 15, I think it was, a couple of months back. Uh, and I just thought to myself, yeah, do you know what, I'm going to listen to it again. I mean, you know, I'll give it another go. I'll keep trying to see how much better I like it. And it just keeps on climbing. It just keeps on climbing. About a week before I made this video, I had this, uh, I think, number seven. But I just couldn't live with myself leaving it down there. This is, honestly... One of the most rewarding albums I think I've listened to this year. More so than Dune's Void Kind, this is an album which really gives back to you the more you put into it. The more you take time to appreciate what this is doing and how expansive and how glorious, I suppose, the, the overall aesthetic of this record is. It will just really knock you down. It has done such a number on me recently. I can't put it away. I love this album so much. I'm super glad I got a signed copy. And I'm teetering this close to not only having this, but ordering the vinyl as well, because I kind of want it on both. So I'm thinking I might treat myself. We'll see, though, you know, because uh, money, money, money and all that jazz. Once again, for the people who love terrible pronunciation, that is Traverse the Bearlack by Scale. Okay, here we go. Top three. This was hard. You know, this was very, very difficult. Especially moving this next record away from its lofty position at the top. Yeah, I know. I've spoken a lot about it on social media, about, about this being my number one record of the year. Nothing can touch it. Blah, 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 blah. Turns out I was wrong, but hey, what can you do? This is still absolute fire. It is none less than... Almo's Reconciliation, which I got a lovely, lovely copy of, which was sent out to me, all signed and everything, so, oh, look at that, very nice, very, very nice, and it's gorgeous on the inside, look at that, oh, love it. Very, very eye-catching packaging, but my god, I think this is about as perfect as it gets if you're looking for that kind of classic progressive metal sound, you know, the, your Dream Theatres, your Hakens, your, maybe even your Symphony Xs to a certain degree. But I think what Almo has really captured on this is a spirit of what that type of progressive metal can be. You know, this isn't a um, wildly original record, you know. There is nothing on this that will surprise you if you're a fan of the genre. But what will surprise you is not its compositions, but how fluently it tells its stories. How meticulously well put together everything feels feels, you know? There is a feeling to this album which is inescapably brilliant. Almo has put his heart and soul into this record. You feel it at every single point and turn, every riff, every passage, every melody is so infectiously brilliant. And don't even get me started about the title track, which is easily in contention for Epic of the Year. Can't really see many things coming close to even getting halfway as good as that, but hey ho, who knows what the next half of the year's got. But for now, at number three, we've got Almo's Reconciliation. Okay, top two, let's go, let's go. Again, this is another one which has sort of risen in my ranks over the course of the year. It is the wonderful, the sublime, the divine, Kairos with their album, Mannequin. Oh, my sainted goodness, I love this record. This is so, so good, it almost makes me want to weep. It also comes on this incredibly uh, 
how should we put it, eye-catching orange, you know? It's like neon as anything, and now I can't get it back into its sleeve because it's very, very tight, so you'll have to bear with me two seconds whilst I manhandle this thing and get it back in there so I can continue to display it for your viewing pleasure. There we go. Look at that. I did it. Wow. Manual dexterity. Ain't that a thing? Yeah, Kairos' Mannequin. Wonderful, wonderful album, fusing the best parts of modern electronica with progressive metal sensibilities to create a absolutely magical fusion of the two. This is so good. It is so much fun and contains, alongside In the Garden by Amscray, one of my Song of the Year contenders with Esoterica. I would say if you're going to try any track off this album to see if it's Canny or Jam, then that is absolutely where you should go with. It's got this wonderful sense of modern pop music sheen, really sort of blended perfectly with these really, I don't know, these... these fabulously creative passages which just make this such a joy to listen to and the entire album just feels like that you know everything about this feels creative it feels genre bending it feels just like something you really just want to champion to everybody you ever meet i love this album it is so so good but it is kept from the top by only one record and i'm pretty sure those of you who've been following me for a little bit now have got a reasonably solid idea of what my current number one is. We're back to compact disc territory because I was too cheap to pay for the vinyl, but it's... Da -da 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 -da. Bellum 2 by Aquilus. My current number one of the year. Oh my god. God, where do I start with this? Where... Where the hell do I start with this? This record is insane. It's, it's so crazy to me. This is the most fascinating interesting, ballsy record I've heard in some time. This is so, so good. Solo projects are always a bit of a, you know, a... Uh, ooh, I don't know, they, they, they kind of like tickle me a little bit. I love solo projects, you know, I'm like, ooh. Because it's like, you think to yourself, this is incredible, and then you realise, oh my god, only one person is responsible for all of this. They've done everything, and you think, what the hell, you know? And there's just something about the way that this album flows. You know, it's got, it takes you by surprise. That's what it is. It takes me by surprise because it starts off pretty straightforwardly black metal, you know, the, the intro track and then you move into Into the Earth and it's all very normal and very ordinary black metal. But then you get to the big epics of this, you know, the big 17 plus minute epics. And there's two of them on here. You know, you've got um, Night to Her Gloam and My Frost Laden Veil. You know, those are the big boy tracks on here. And I swear to God, Nothing prepared me for those. Nothing prepared me for how fluently the uh, juxtaposition between cinematic orchestrations and black metal, it was done so flawlessly and so adventurously, I suppose is the best way of putting it, that I was absolutely gobsmacked by it. And I continue to be gobsmacked by it. There are so many little moments on this album which just absolutely just come out of nowhere. It just comes out of nowhere. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? How is this this crazy? How is this this fearless with what it's doing? I've never heard anybody do anything quite as exciting as this. This is, without a shadow of a doubt, one of the most exciting releases I've heard in the 2020s, and I just can't get enough of it. I can't leave this one alone. Everything about my gut instinct was telling me this is the best album of the year so far. This is the standard of which everybody else has to aspire to if you want to get the top spot. Unless something crazy happens over the course of the next six months, and I really hope it does, because Lord knows I love an upset. But I can, I genuinely see this as being like, you know, the one to beat. This is could very well be the top spot at the end of the year. You know, December 31st rolls around, everybody's, you know, shouting old Lang Syne to each other, and I'm just sort of rocking out to this one last time before 2025 starts, you know. Hell of a way to bring in the new year. So, yeah, there we have it. That is my list of the 10 best albums of 2024 so far. Ooh. Yeah, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens with this going forward. I really, really hope there's, like, more out there, which is similar to this sort of stuff in terms of how it hits me. And if it doesn't, then at least we know we've got something absolutely crazy already sitting on top of the pedestal. So hooray for Bellum 2. Hooray, hooray. Go listen to it right now. I'm telling you. Go ahead. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. So that, of course, is my list, but there's bound to be stuff I've missed, you know? I was going to do the 20s, so I might do a honourable mentions video if I'm feeling particularly saucy or if I feel like I've got enough time to do so. 
I don't know, we might not do. Uh, <laughs> but please do tell me what your 10 favourite records of the year so far are. I don't care about genre, I love everything, so please tell me what you've been listening to, please tell me what I've not listed here. Maybe I've got it on my honourable mentions, maybe I don't. Either which way, I don't want to miss a thing, you know? In the immortal words of Aerosmith and all that jazz, you know. So, please drop a comment down below telling me what you thought of my list, and please do tell me your list as well. If you have lasted this long, thank you so very much for watching. Please drop me a thumbs up if you have enjoyed this video. Please do subscribe to the channel if you've been enjoying the content so far. And as always, guys, you know what's coming. Keep your rhyme signatures pretty odd.